Patrick, I'm a dairy farmer here at Gaza Dairy Farm, found in Rusika. So what I can say is unique about my farm is uh, that I've maintained and even added on to the principles of dairy farming through an efficient management system where I store enough feeds, make sure that the cows are well fed. I have uh, also uh, uh, done good genetics, record keeping. Cow comfort, as you can see, the cows have been so comfortable, they're now waiting to be milked soon, so you can see they're becoming a bit, a bit whatever, inquisitive, and they're still beginning to stand facing the milking area. So, but I've, uh, I've, I've, I've learned that if you have storage of feeds, if you have genetics, and you have a system of comfort where cows are milked on time, fed on time, and clean water is availed on time they maintain a very good uh, production rate uh, that will make your farm break even and even run on a very good system uh, so this is what we are doing here at gaza dairy farm and we are managing to do this because of uh, those same principles but also with our community engagement we managed to have the feeds throughout the year through what we grow on the farm and what we get from our neighbors in uh, form of maize and, uh, and other pastures like uh, sweet potato vine silage that we use in the feeding. So uh, the breed of cows we are doing here is called the Frisian cow, Western Frisian cow. And uh, you can see they are all uniform. And as you can see from this farm, we use semen, which we call sex semen. Another semen which has been uh, filtered from the male sperms, uh, so that you have 99% uh, female sperms. That way we are able to maintain a system that gives us a hay for every year. And uh, yeah, I'm happy uh, as a lecturer and a surgeon, this is something that, uh, has, it, it, that profession has helped me to give me capital to set up my dream, where I want to retire from. This is the kind of work I will be doing. I'll be looking after my cow and sheep, and whatever goats, and I will be able to retire comfortably, actively, and, uh, and uh, I'll be a happy person going forward. And as farmers, we have set up uh, an organization called Dairy Farmers Network, which I welcome farmers who want to start to join, so that you can have monthly learning, we meet at farms, we visit each other, we exchange a lot of information on that kind of a network. I welcome farmers to register on that uh, on, on, online and join these kind of forums, uh, which, which are now the trend, so that we can keep in each other's lives and help you, those who are starting, uh, to do this kind of activity. When they give birth, uh, we milk colostrum within 30 minutes and we take the calf uh, into a warm uh, shelter and then that colostrum from the mother which we have milked we give it around uh, two liters and in the first day it will take six liters or four to six liters that's the feeding that we give it for the next two months as it grows but at, at around three days to one week we start introducing the the, the solid feeds why? Because we want the lumen to develop. So it, cuts, it starts eating little by little. And by two months it's eating real food. So that's when we start weaning it off the milk. So that by three months it's off that milk and it's now on solid feeds and it's given water. And that, at, at, that le at that level we group them together for easy of feeding. Okay? They move from the nursery section to the uh, heifer section where they start growing. 
and uh, as they grow up to six months, eight months, we start introducing silage. The silage of maize has a lot of energy and they need that when they are uh, uh, milking. So we keep them there up to the 12 months and then at 12 months they come down and then they are served with semen between 12 and 14 months. So that by the first year, of, by the second birthday, they are giving us a, a, a heifer. And before they give birth to that heifer, uh, two months to, to giving birth, they come into the milking area, milking shed, and we start what we call steaming them. Steaming means you start introducing some more, more concentrates and whatever, but you don't give them so much calcium until they are almost giving birth, maybe in one week. Then in one week, to, to whatever, to giving birth, they start going to the milking shed to get used to it. They start eating the real food that those cows which are milking eat, and then they will bring the milk, you see the milk coming, the others, and by the time they deliver, they are ready to be milked. So that is the cycle of a cow uh, on this farm. Okay, 10 to 15 liters of milk per milking. So here we decided to milk them twice. But uh, if, you, if you have few and you have a, the system and you have the feeding system very well set up, then you can milk them three times and they will go to from 30, 25, 30 to 40 liters. Uh, but here we milk them only twice a, a, what? a day. The milk market is, we are in the urban setting, so we still have a lot of uh, demand for milk. Uh, and we, we sell it in this area of Sika, Gayaza, Kasangat. At the data is 1,600. It's uh, one record keeping, uh, uh, cementing the knowledge that genetics is the way to go. So that's that's when you when you when you start using semen and persisting with selection, you realize that all cows are now equally productive. You don't even have to to worry about which cow you want to choose to sell. So that is the second thing that we learned. Then the third thing we learned is about food storage. Those people have winter, but they invest a lot in food storage, food grow, uh, pasture growing and food storage, which we need to also start uh, doing here collectively, but also individually. Collectively by getting groups that can run a machinery contract so that everybody can use that kind of machinery and, uh, and also individually. Uh, by, by trying to invest in the, in the machines that can help us uh, store the, the whatever, the, the feed. And uh, for the record uh, keeping, uh, I also adopted the Dutch system where all my cows now, I can see them on the, on the phone and uh, my data is on the phone. So I can talk, I can uh, see how my cows are doing right on the phone and make decisions on the phone with the manager. But I also introduced some uh, the technology of uh, cameras, which also I can see in real time what's happening on the farm. Because I'm still not so busy, but a little bit busy as a, as a head of department uh, at, at Makerere Mulago Orthopedics. I need time to also teach the future orthopedic surgeons before I retire. So, and also get the capital to keep uh, my system running more efficiently. I see my farm will, will have 200 animals. Okay, now we have 70 animals, so we shall have 200 animals. We shall have some more sheep for genetic, for specifically for breeding. Uh, that's the doper sheep and the goats, okay, which, which are from South Africa. And then the milk handling will be now more advanced. We shall have uh, some coolers here and the do a little processing if go. go if God willing, and then I will also have uh, probably a hostel because I, I like to teach. I'm a teacher, so I want to do some kind of agro tourism and some training. Somebody wants to learn about dairy farming. You come, you get a cottage somewhere, or you stay in the hostel. You learn about the dairy farming. You pay me a little money and uh, you enjoy the stay on the farm and then you go uh, to practice what, uh, what you are seeing. So basically that's what I'm thinking that uh, this farm will be in, the, in 
five years from now. The advice I want to give to the youth is to, to start where you are. This farm didn't start with many animals and a lot of capital. I started with four animals. I started with wooden structures. And uh, this is where I am. I think that you can start where you are, so long as you have the mathematics and you put in your energy to, to, to start and stick to the principles, as I've said, of genetics, comfort, and feeding. Of course, for us, we didn't grow in a city. I grew up in Iburoba. And uh, when I grew up in Iburoba, I used to like enjoy farming. The reason why I like farming is uh, it is one of the ways of being productive. It's what gives us food. It's what feeds the, 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 the populations. So, but I was not specifically looking at cows. But when I reached the cows, I fell in love with cows. Because cows have longevity about them. They have a class about them. You interact with the serious people. Uh, in this country, everybody serious looks after cows. So the class of people you interact with are, is the serious class of people. Uh, sec thirdly, cows eat grass and uh, they convert that into milk or gold, we call it uh, white gold. Uh, so I, people fear them, but I think that when you learn the art of looking after cows, it's the best uh, kind of practice. Uh, that you can uh, retire into. So, so I settled for cows and I love them dearly because of that. But uh, generally I liked farming because I was introduced to farming by my parents uh, when I was studying when I was a young man. But when I grew up and I tried other things, uh, tree farming, what, what, I settled for cows. They, 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 were, they were exciting me. That, that calf every year, the milk they give you, they, you can hear, we've been quiet, we've been interviewing, but I'm surrounded by cows. They're not making noise. If I, if I was uh, with the pigs here, the interview wouldn't go on. They would be shouting at us. But these are very gentle creatures. People just fear them for nothing. Very easy to manage, and they will give you what you want. This breed, breed people fear it, but it's the best breed. It will be sick today, the cow will fall sick today. Give it an injection, it gets better. Tomorrow, it's back to production and giving you the same milk that it was giving you before it fell sick. These cows, of course, the, the, the design of, of the houses, the, of these cows is that uh, they have a drainage under for urine. Then they have the bed section. Bed section you can put there either straw or you can put there sand. And, and then they have where they eat from. So therefore, when they are lying like that, the bed is slanting a bit. When they lie in their bed, they can only uh, 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 they can only do number two into the alley. Okay, and even susu into the alley. They cannot wet their bed, so the bed is always clean. And these boys who clean, they clean once a day or twice a day. They only clean the cow dung in the alley where they are standing. So that way, you manage to keep them clean. The only that the cows that we see on the farm are those which lie in the alley. They are cows which are stubborn. They refuse to lie on a, a soft bed and they come and lie here. I don't know why. But generally, most cows are clean because they lie in the beds. The dung is a, is, this is a 360, this is a, three, a 360 activity. When the dung comes off, it goes in the gardens. It goes somewhere to be kept and then goes to the gardens. In the future, we are going to do uh, biogas. Uh, because biogas gives you slurry that goes directly into the gardens. But here, the cow dung, you just heap it somewhere and then in the season, you spread it and it goes into the garden.